today is Friday the 13th and earlier we asked you to get in touch with your superstitions to see if the Speakmans can help explain them away. Yeah, and they can either with us now. This is yeah, fun. Yeah. It's like, oh, isn't yeah. it any, like your favourite days of the year? Because loads of people get in touch with you. Definitely. Yeah. I'm interested to know if you two have got any superstitions at all. Good oh, question. my God, I had, like, loads. My really? pies, op opening umbrella in the house. You had? Did had. Nick Not speak them, them away? Got rid of them all. Well, just even doing what we do for over the years, they've now melted away. That's amazing. Because of what we're going to be sharing with everybody today, yeah. basically. Can I just say, someone was going to come in today and we were going to work with them, right. but they got that fright and they won't leave the house. Seriously? Oh, yeah. That's sad. It really so it's a, yeah. a really big deal for a well, lot of people. Let's help some people out and speak to Linda in York, first and foremost. Hello, Linda. Thanks for joining us. Hi there. Oh, Hi there. Morning, all. Right. all. Morning. So, Linda, it's about magpies, is it? It is, yeah. I have a... Well, if you can call it superstition, I don't really have any superstitions, really, except magpies. If I see one, I have to look out for more and I've got to go through the rhyme, one for sorrow, two for joy and all the, all the rest like of that, it. You know. I'm like you, Linda. I'm very similar to you. Yeah, and I was as well, but it's Even now was. gone. So let's help you over this, what do we Linda. Have to do? We sleep well, the magpie, Sorry. because that's getting rid of the bad luck, right? And allegedly. The bad luck is, allegedly. Morning, is it morning Mr Magpie, how's yes. Mrs Magpie? Yes, it can be. Yeah. But you don't have to do it. You don't no. Have to, well, you shouldn't have to do it, and this is why. With all superstitions, there is a story be behind them. And this started from a rhyme that was written in 1780, and then it was revitalised with the TV show in the 70s, which I assume is where you heard it from, Linda. Is that right? Yeah, that's, that's where I think I've got it from. Yeah. Right, and OK. And obviously the rhyme the goes... Rhyme. One for sorrow, one two for joy. So if you see one, that means that you're going to have sorrow, you're going to have bad luck. But actually, the bad luck isn't your bad luck. It actually belongs to the magpie. Oh. And the reason why is magpies mate for life. When they find a mate, that's it. No one night stands, nothing like that. They mate for life. And therefore... <laughs> what's that? <laughs> and therefore, if a magpie yes. is on its own, potentially it's lost its lifelong partner and therefore it will live the rest of its life on its oh, own, and that's why it's it sorrowful. It's really sad, and th and that is why when we say one for sorrow, the sorrow doesn't belong to us; it belongs to the magpie because the magpie, when it's on its own, is likely to be on its own for the rest of its life. So the magpie has already had the bad luck; it isn't going to come to you. So I'm cured. Don't. I don't Linda, know about you. What fine. about you, Linda? It's the magpies I'm worried about. We yeah. should have the magpie phone in today. Yeah, any, what, any yes. magpie issues. But, what, what's... but also, there's another thing to consider here because I saw a single magpie last week and it was on its own for about 15 minutes and then suddenly its partner came along. Cheap so joy. could be out shopping. Yeah. You never Just know. having separation yeah. time. Yeah. Cheap Generally. joy. Yeah, Linda, do you feel like you're cured? I do. Yeah, the thing is. I go to bingo, hmm. and like today I go to bingo, and it's like uh, when I see one, I've got to look for another, and then thinking I've got luck. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So hang on, so if you see two, then you get lucky. Yeah. Like, like that. today. But also, like Linda, you said sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It exactly, seems a thing called yeah. confirmation bias, and we look for something that we already believe in, it's and then that bet. gives us confirmation, yeah. oh. right? But actually, why, if you're going to bingo tonight, who knows, you could be in luck whether you see a magpie yeah. or not. But what we can tell you is that, like all superstitions, it is literally from a story that's been diluted over the years, complete and utter um, sort of misconception of what it actually means. The sorrow isn't for us, the sorrow is for the magpie. And when you can pity it as opposed to think, oh, my gosh, it's something bad, you can let that one go. That worked for me and it's worked for Linda, you. Linda, good tonight. luck. Good but luck. secretly, I hope you see a second magpie tonight. <laughs> B8. Come on, B8. just win big tonight, baby. Not with bingo. Come on, Linda. <laughs> Who's next now? Uh, let's go to Pauline in Dundee. Morning, Pauline. Morning. Morning, oh, morning. Pauline. Tell us about your superstition. Well, it sounds silly, like, but if I want to wish for anything, I just seem to touch wood, whether I'm outside or in the house or any place. I just feel I want to touch wood, and it's getting to the state that. I'm actually touching wood all the time and I don't know what, what, what to do. OK, well... Um, we don't want that. Uh, no, thank I'm you. A, I'm a big wood I, I literally... For me, it's more yeah. of a temp fate rather than a good luck thing. But exactly. It is one of the most common. Yeah, touching a bit it of wood. Is. Always. Yeah, and the reason that we do any of these couple situations of taps. is just to give us just that little bit of reassurance. And we all want that feeling of reassurance. So let me explain this one. And just bear in mind that all superstitions are just like Chinese whispers. And in the game Chinese oh. whispers, 
we, we get told something, it gets passed on, and by the time it gets to the last person, it's nothing like what the, uh, the origin was. That's and that like is... working here at this morning, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly the same. So that's what you've got to first bear in mind, that it is no different to Chinese Whisper. So let me tell you the origin of that, and I would really expect that this will help make a difference. So this one, uh, chopping on wood, goes back to pagan beliefs. And what they believed back then, that in wood, they lived these kind of malevolent, mischievous uh, spirits. So when what the, the reason they would knock on wood is that if you were telling somebody a secret or you were telling somebody what you wanted to do, you would knock on wood, not to give you luck, but to stop the spirits from hearing what you're about to say. So that there you go. great knowledge. Isn't it? So we've been knocking on wood for the wrong reason. So all this time you think it gives you luck, it doesn't. But it's trying to stop the spirits and the wood from hearing what you're saying. How do you feel about that, Pauline? Do you think that's going to stop you knocking on wood? <laughs> Probably no, I just can't help. It's my birthday today and... I, I just, I, I don't know what I've done, I just went happy birthday because it's also my dad's birthday as well today, but he's no longer with me. And I just went touch wood and I just wish for a good day. And, well, whether it comes true or not, I don't know. Maybe maybe you might find on your birthday now it might be, be reduced now that you've heard that it doesn't even bring you luck. Well, this is it. Everybody needs a bit of luck in their life, but I didn't seem to have it. I don't know why. Well, that's true as well. You've got to bear in mind that habit does come into this as well. So if you've had a habitual behaviour for so long, then you will have to remind yourself that, oh, hang on, I'm thinking this is luck, but that's not what this is about. I got it wrong. Uh, but obviously, if it gives you a bit of comfort, then that's why we do these things. But literally, to, to stop any habit, you've got to stop yourself in your tracks and just go, oh, hang on a second, that's not what this is for. And eventually, that habit dilutes. Mm. Thanks, Pauline. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, yes, birthday. Pauline raised a very good point. Like, Pauline's not doing anything there that's particularly holding her back in life, is it? It's just, just, it's just a bit of superstition she's got. And yeah. so, but sometimes it's become a little bit more... Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, if you do anything and it makes you feel better and gives you some sense of sure. relief, then it's fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But it's, it's not great if she's like in well, somewhere this is where it. she's got to be silent though, and she keeps knocking. Well, this is me? it because we've got Karen now in Nottinghamshire, and Karen, yours is a bit more serious. It sounds like because you feel like the number thirteen can kind of properly haunt you. Is that right? Yes, that's yeah. right. Good Talk morning, us through... everybody. Good morning. morning. Thanks for joining us. Talk us through how that uh, manifests itself, Karen. Uh, well, it started when we moved house, um, and we actually moved in to a house that was one hundred and thirteen. Um, and then when I was 13 years of age, my mum and my dad uh, separated. Um, but before they ended up getting divorced, my father, who was a miner, um, got killed um, oh, at the mine. So um, and the number 13, um, I, won't, I just won't have anything to do with it and I don't know how to break the cycle. Sounds like there's a lot of trauma. Yeah, yeah I, I think one way to break the cycle is uh, you'd be surprised how many times number 13 has cropped up in your life. Because, I mean, there's a 13th day every month. And what I'd like to consider, because at an early age, and I'm so sorry that your parents played something, I'm so sorry that, that, that your dad uh, was in an accident and passed away. Uh, but what you've done, you've then focused on that as that being something that, that will always create bad luck. But if you were to look back at things that have happened to you on the 13th day of the month, for example, through your life, I'm sure some good things have happened to you on the 13th. But going back to confirmation bias, so what we do as human beings, we have a confirmation bias and we cherry-pick information to fit in with our beliefs and what we think. So what you've done there is you've said, you've cherry-picked that information and go, there you go, I've got more evidence why 13 is look unlucky for me. But what you haven't done is looked at dates that have been looked at, the, the 13th, dates of the month yeah. that good things have happened and nor have you looked at other bad things because I'm sure that other traumas have happened in your life, other bad things have happened in your life but because they've been on a different day of the week mm. you're not even bothering about those and that's what you've got to look, you've got to kind of weigh up and understand the origin again because I know that you spoke about that at the start of the show of where this, this came from and again this got diluted because it actually started off as a lucky thing back in ancient Egypt, 13 was considered to be very very lucky but then there was the Norse God story where there was the, the 13th was with Loki and he was a bit of a mischief maker and caused trouble and then we've got the Last Supper as well and the disciples and the 13th guest with Judas so um, so he was considered that he was he was bad so th this is where this belief has come from over the years but it has been exaggerated but 
keep a little note and diary of good things that have happened in your life, bad things, and note how many actually didn't happen on the 13th mm. or did. Oh, good luck with that, darling. Yeah. Do you know what? This just reminded me. Go it's on. the 13th of January today, isn't it? Yes. No, yeah, it is, yeah. And this is the day my mum passed away oh, no. in bed 13. And we buried her on the 13th of February. Wow. It's just literally come to me wow. today. Wow. And we did it on the 13th because I just thought, why, why not? Because it was yeah. all 13. So I don't associate with anything bad. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and that's and exactly. And it was a lovely it. funeral. It's literally just come to me. Sorry. Yeah, yeah it's all right. It's yeah. just yeah. literally. Well, we're just talking to okay. Rusty actually mm? as well, and she was saying it, life is about what we choose to look for, isn't it? Yeah. Because there's good in every day, and mm. there's bad in every, you know good things and bad things happen all the time. Um, but yeah, it is. We've got to. And if you think there is a stigma around Friday the Thirteenth, because these stories go back a long time, okay. and we are told that it's a problem. So if anything goes wrong on Friday the Thirteenth, you go, oh, it's because of the day, and we blame the day, and it's mm. not always the case. Well, let's see if we can help Danielle in London. Hi, Danielle. Hi there. Hey, Danielle. Thanks for calling. Danielle, you're superstitious about pretty much everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tell it's us a little bit really about hard. it. Um, so. Um, it started with my mum always believed in them all. Um, so that made it a lot worse because it's something I like, grew up with. But now living in London, and I work in central London quite a lot, it can be really hard when I'm trying to avoid three drains all the time when I'm surrounded by people because it's either walk over the three drains or walk into a person. Yeah. Really interesting that you say about your mum, actually, because that's where this needs to start off with getting over your superstitions. I think it's something like 52% of superstitions are taught from our parents. And if they believe something, then we will believe it. And as children, yeah. because we exaggerate things, we will kind of blow it out of proportion. We don't question them, just like we don't question our accent. We just copy our parents. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and how do you know what you call? Because your parent told you what you're called. So we do kind of believe those things. So the first thing to do with yourself is to look back and go, OK, so this isn't actually even mine. This is what my mum has taught me. And so she's put me on high alert for, for superstition. So that's the first thing that you've got to think about. And then e equally, so you're very superstitious about all sorts of things. So you, you genuinely, this, anybody who's superstitious, write down your superstitions. Then you want, what you want to do from after that is understand where they originate from. Because once you understand the story, you can go, right, OK, I get it. Um, you also have to consider how it impedes your life and does it make sense. So with your, did you say it was drains that was... Yeah, that's three drains. Yeah, OK. So the, the drains thing, that comes from uh, sort of a, an old story from many, many years ago where there was uh, three drains in the road and um, I, I think it was a little boy was said to have walked over well, the... Well, someone came out to maintain them and the third drain, they didn't put the cover on properly. Yeah. So this little boy walked over them and fell down the third one and got injured and that's where that story yeah, came so from. Yeah, so instead of going, OK, that chap didn't screw it on properly and didn't put it right, we blame the third drain. Right. So, oh. and that's where that's come from. So when you can start making sense of it and go, oh, OK, that drain man probably doesn't even work. He's probably not even here anymore because it was from so long ago. But was ago. the story even real? And was There's it even real, question. yeah. So that's, that's what you've got, to, you've got to do and kind of understand and say, challenge the origin as well. So this is about dismantling the oh, theory. Everything, everything, yeah. everything that we believe or don't believe, the way to do it is to kind of work back and go, right, you know, let's let's find the origin and let... Because uh, what we do is we go through life looking for evidence to back up what we're believing. Yeah. This, that's what we do. Like I said, we cherry-pick that information. So instead of doing that, we've got to work on the opposite and go, all right, OK, so how is what I'm believing actually not true? Mm. How may I have misunderstood this situation? Yeah. And once we can start looking for that evidence, that's when we start to break down those beliefs. And, and once we change our belief, we'll let it go. Yeah, because our thoughts create our feelings and our feelings create our behaviours. Change your thoughts, you'll change your feelings, change your feelings, you change your so behaviour. So clever, isn't it? Right. So house clever. must be so risk-free. <laughs> <laughs> Galavanting <laughs> naked all the time, frying pans on, you name it. It's very it's similar to that, actually. Yeah. Danielle, thanks for calling. <laughs>